Okay, so next let's talk about testing. We're gonna talk about what happens when we test your app and how to make forward progress on each MP checkpoint through iterative testing and experimentation and changes that you need to make to the app. Okay, so the first thing to figure out is where are the tests? So in the source directory in your app uh, subdirectory as part of uh, the starter code, you'll see two directories. One is called main. That's where all the code that powers your app actually lives. The other one is called test. This is where the tests live. So we've been looking around in main so far. Let's open up the test directory and let's open up mp0test.kt. Now, this is the test suite for MP0. Like the rest of the app, we have done our best to make this super, super clear to the degree that that's possible because there's some unfamiliar ideas and concepts here. Um, but part of the reason that we provide these test suites, well, let me back up a little bit. These are the same test suites we use to test your app during official grading. Unlike the homework problems, we're not generating test suites automatically and, and doing all these clever things. We wrote these test suites, I should say we. I wrote these test suites. And I wrote them in a way that I would write for a project I was working on, right? So these are sort of test suites that are designed to give you a sense of what test suites look like in the actual world of software creation, because testing plays an incredibly important role in software development. We'll talk a little bit about that in a few minutes. So anyway, so these test suites, I will say right up front, they may not be perfect. Now, here's what I know though. These, there is a way to solve the puzzle. I have a solution set that passes all these tests and the tests for the next few checkpoints. So I know that there is a solution. However, it's possible that you will find certain ways to do things that we didn't anticipate that might pass the test suites that might not be perfectly correct. That's okay. These are human generated test suites. I'm infallible. Did I just say I'm infallible? Well, it's a little bit of a, uh, a sort of revealing mistake. I am fallible. I like to think I'm infallible, but I'm certainly not. I am fallible about being infallible, uh, as well as many other things. And these test suites, I'm sure, are not perfect. But there is a way to solve it, and we will guide you there and help you along the way. Um, okay, so, so again, these are the test suites that we use when we actually grade your app. There's no hidden information here. There's no hidden tests. These are the actual tests. Um, now, let's run them and get a sense of, of what's happening. So one thing I want you to note for MP0, this won't necessarily be true for future checkpoints, is some of the tests are already passing. And the reason for that is I wrote some of these as I was developing the machine project as part of my own development process. And again, we'll talk about test-driven development in a few minutes, but there are a few tests that are already passing here and there are a few that are failing. The failing ones are up to you to fix. And we're gonna talk a little bit about how to go about that. Now, one point I wanna make that's important to understand is that the test suites are here to guide your development of the project. Do not run the grade task, get confused because you're not earning points and come to us on the forum. I know this will happen, but we'll typically tell you run the test suite. The test suite produces a lot more useful output than the grade task does. I know a lot of you are so grade focused, you see grade and you just wanna push that button over and over again until you see 100 points or something like that. It's not actually a very good way to make forward progress. The other thing is the test suites allow you to run individual tests, which is something that we're gonna do in a minute so that you can develop in a focused manner and work on one specific thing at a time until you get that right and then you go on and pretty soon if you do that one at a time, you have 100 on all the AP checkpoints in your goal. All right, so run the test suites. Um, you know, that, that's, you know, that's the, the, the big piece of advice. The great task is something that you should only run once in a while. The test suites is something, the test suites should be uh, run frequently as you're developing uh, your application. All right, so um, let's look at what's going on here. Um, so, oh, the other thing I wanna point out, there's two different types of tests that we run when we test your app. So your app has two components. It has what's called a front end. That's the Android application that you interact with that shows, draws the map and the markers and you can click on and stuff like that. Um, that's the part that interacts with the user. There's also what's called a back end which is a backend server that communicates with the front end and provides the data that's used by the front end. Now, normally the front end code is the actual app that runs on your phone and the backend server runs in the cloud or on some computer in a data center somewhere or something like that. But 
What we do in this class is to give you an experience to do what's called full stack development, where you modify both the back end and the front end. We've put everything all in one place. But this has a consequence when it comes to testing, which is that we're actually going to test both the back end separately and then also the front end. Now, the tests that test the back end only tend to be pretty quick because it's uh, for reasons that I won't expound on too much. It's uh, more efficient to just test the back end part of, of the code, and so those tests will run a little faster. When we have to simulate your entire app to do things like the, the tests that run slow and simulate your entire app, you can almost think of them as like simulating like a human going in and clicking a button in a particular place and make sure that the right thing happens. That's actually what we're going to do in a couple of checkpoints when we add that functionality to the app. So those tests typically run more slowly. This is another reason to zero in on one test at a time and work on one test because when you're working on those uh, backend tests, those or unit tests as they're described here, those tend to be faster. Okay, so I, I ran this. This is the test suite for MB0. This is what you should see at this point, which is that three of the tests are failing, uh, passing, excuse me, two of them are failing. So let's look at one of those that's failing. Um, and let's start to develop our workflow here. So I'm gonna pick off uh, this one. This is one of the more difficult ones. Um, and let's run it and, uh, and, and talk, about, talk about what happens here. Okay, um, so this says graded test that the app centers the map correctly after launch. Um, okay, um, and so it's not, so, Oh, sorry, one other thing I want to point out. I use this little green arrow over here next to the name of the test. That allows me to run one test at a time. You'll also see that it puts that up in my run configuration so I can rerun that test uh, repeatedly. That's usually what you want to do. So don't run the whole test suite. Run one test at a time. Pick a test you're going to work on. Run that test. It's not working. Then think about how to get it to work. Um, so this one's a little bit tricky. Um, so what, what is this doing? So the first thing when we're uh, working with the tests is always figure out what is the test trying to do? What is the test asking of the app that it's not doing properly? So what this does is it starts up the activity and then it checks to see if the center of the map is at this default center location. And I'm using this method called compare geo points that essentially does like an approximate comparison. These are doubles. And so, you know, they have a lot of precision. And so we compare them using like a, an offset. Um, okay, so what's default center? Default center is where the map should be centered. And this is this geo point. Now a geo point is the class provided by OSM Droid, which is the mapping Android mapping library that we're using. And as it looks like, it represents a point on the Earth, a latitude, longitude pair. Should be familiar to us at this point. So this is where the map should be set. So I might be wondering, what's so special about this particular location? And I will leave that for you to discover after you properly center the map. So once you get the test to pass, don't forget to run the app and see where it's centered and smile. Um, okay, so this is where the map should be centered. The map is not centered in that location right now. Now I've got to go look at my uh, main activity to figure out how to get this to work. Oh, let me, let me point out one thing. So some of you um, will do something akin to this, right? So you might think, oh, okay, well, I don't know. The test isn't working, so here's a way to make the test work, right? Um, which is just to remove the assertion that's part of the test. If you do this, in fact, the test will pass. Will this work when you submit for official grading? The answer is no, because when we grade your code, we use our test suites, not your test suites. So you are welcome to make changes to the test suites as you are developing, but when you go to run the grade task, you will get a error message if you have made changes to the test suite at that point, because that, that will cause your score to be incorrect. So. You know, uh, you may be tempted to do this. You may do this in these other less obvious ways. But the idea here is that the test suites are correct. The test suites are always correct and your app is wrong. Now, normally when you're writing software, sometimes your test suites are wrong, right? They have bugs in them just like the rest of your code. But in this case, the test suites are always correct. It's your app that needs to change. So making changes to the test suites can make it look like they might pass. But if you haven't changed the app properly, it's going to fail when you run it for official grade.
All right, so I'm gonna take that off again because I do want to make sure the app is centered properly. And let's go explore the main activity because I suspect, I mean, this is the only activity in my app right now. And I would suspect that if the map needs to be centered properly, the main activity is probably gonna have something to do with it. Now, give you kind of a hint here, right? One of the things that's cool about Android and about using Android Studio is that you get autocomplete. Right? Some of you have been missing autocomplete ever since the, we, we started working together. Um, but in this case, the map view, um, which is the component on the map that renders the map, has this controller property. And that controller property, if I hit dot, this brings up a list of potentially useful methods that I might want to control on the controller, might want to call on the controller. I can set the zoom. I just did that one line above. I can zoom in. I can animate to. I can scroll by. I can set center. Mm -hmm. I can, you know, stop panning. There's all these interesting methods here. And so maybe one of those methods would allow me to set the center of the map properly. That's about as far as I'm going to take you. There's a little bit of work left to do to figure out kind of how to pass the right thing to set center and stuff like that. But you're close at this point, right? Okay, so now as you go, notice that you know this test is still up here in the run configuration. So I can make a change down here and then I could run test map center and that'll take a couple of seconds, maybe slower on your machine. And as soon as that succeeds, I know I'm, on, I'm, I'm, I'm making progress. Once this test passes, the next thing I'm gonna do is go back and rerun the entire MP0 test suite. And this is something that you always do whenever you're testing run one test, get it to pass, but then go back and run the whole test suite and make sure that you haven't broken anything else. Because sometimes the changes you make to fix one thing end up breaking something else, right? So you zero in, work on that one thing, but that before you would actually submit your code or commit it or you know, tell your boss, hey, I'm done, you wanna make sure that you haven't affected any of the other functionality in the app. So this, let me make one more comment about this before we wrap up. So. This style of development that you're experiencing here where we give you tests and you write code to pass them is actually something that people do in real life. It's called test-driven development. The idea being that you know, rather than writing code and hoping that, work, hoping that it works, you write the test first to see if the code works and then you write the code and now you know when you're done because the test will start to pass. This is something that I do a lot personally on many of my own projects. So, when you find bugs in some of our pieces of course infrastructure, the first thing I will typically do before, I, sometimes I know exactly what's wrong, but the first thing I'll typically do is I'll write a test to expose the same bug that you found. Like sometimes you find a bug in our code analysis tool. So I'll take that snippet of code that exposed the bug and I'll create a test out of it and I'll make sure that I can get the code to fail in the same way that you did. Then I go and I run that test and I make the changes I think I need to make to the code until that test passes. Now I know that I fixed the bug and then again, I zoom out, I run the entire test suite. So for one of our projects, we now have like 700 or 800 test cases. So I run the entire test suite to make sure that everything else is still working. And now I know that you know I'm making progress. The cool thing is I have another test in my test suite now that tests that thing. So later, if I make another change that causes that piece of functionality to break, I'll know about it. So this is called test-driven development. You write the test first, then you write the code to meet the tests. You know, I, I think it's natural for you as students to develop negative feelings about testing because we use it a lot in grading, but the truth is testing is one of the most positive parts of software creation done properly in the real world because test suites are just a fantastic way to know that you've done something right and then you fix a particular problem. And they also give you a tremendous set of accomplishment because over time, the test suite starts to reflect exactly what that piece of software does. And so I do feel a fair amount of pride in our project that has 800 test suites because that just shows you how much time and energy we spent developing it and getting it to work. Okay, enough of my little, uh, um, you know, uh, glowy speech about test suites. Um, so at this point, this is the workflow I would suggest that you use when you're approaching the MP. Figure out what's not working, um, you know, run the test case. Now, in future MPs uh, checkpoints, we'll give you a, also give you a sense of ordering. So we'll say, work on this test first, get it to pass, then do this other test, then do this other test. So figure out which test you're working on, zero in, run that test all by itself, 
understand the test. So you have to sometimes read through the test to get a sense of what it's doing. Understand why your app isn't passing. What is it doing wrong? How, it's, how is its behavior different than what we're expecting? Work on the app until that test passes. Rerun the whole test suite. Once it passes, give yourself a pat on the back, take a little break, um, and then come back and, and keep going. If you continue to do that, just one test at a time, uh, you'll do a fantastic job on the machine project. Good luck.